Hey everybody, I'm Lucas Hoag, and you're listening to me right here on Airwaves. What's up, guys? It's Abigail here from Airwaves, and I am hanging out here in Nashville with Lucas Hoag. How are you doing today? I am great. How are you? I'm doing awesome, yeah. despite a little rain. You yeah. having a good time here at CMA Fest? Oh, it's always a great time. Yeah. It really is, yeah. What do you got going on this week? Gosh, we had a performance yesterday. We got some signings today, and then another performance tonight at the Hard Rock. So, so keeping busy. Yeah, always. <laughs> There's always. just so much going on this week. There's so many amazing artists, performances, so much happening. What does CMA Fest mean to you, and what does it mean for you to be here this week? It's always just great because it is, I mean, it originates from a fanfare, right? So yeah. it, it was so cool to have all the fans come in and get to hang out and get a little more one-on-one -on -one time than normal if you're out on a show or something like that. So it's really great that they can come in, and it's really all about the fans, you know, which is really cool. Definitely. Definitely, it's super fan oriented. Yeah. What has been your most memorable fan moment from CMA Fest so far? Gosh, that's a In good all question. Your years. That's have a to good just question. <laughs> um, one year, a fan brought me custom cornhole boards. So oh, they had my logo cool. put okay. on these beautiful cornhole boards. I mean, like the legit, like two by fours and plywood. And it was just awesome. Do you still have them? Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. That's yeah. a really thoughtful gift. Yeah, they're great. They're in my backyard <laughs> right now. <laughs> Pretty good. All right, fans got to step it up with Come Lucas on. because yes. seriously, that's a hard gift to beat. That is a hard gift to beat. Um, so you released a dual single recently, That'll mm -hmm. Be The Day and Bad People. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about those songs, why you decided to re release them together and kind of what they mean to you? Yeah, well, as we know, I mean, the industry changes like the way weather around here so you kind of got to reinvent how you release music today so we're doing a streaming thing and we've got a, a terrestrial radio campaign going on at the same time just to maximize viewership streams awareness of the music and all that stuff to so try and capitalize as much as possible and uh, that'll be the day was just a very timely song for me it was one of my favorites that I wrote with uh, three of my good friends uh, Andy Wills, Brett Shiroki and um, gosh this guy changes his name all the time great Canadian <laughs> dude love you buddy Drew Powell he's awesome and uh, uh, just it was a great song that just kind of fell out of us and we just had a great time writing it I had an awesome time in the studio with my with my band and we produced it ourselves so that was really cool too and it just turned out great and I wanted to put that one out right away because it had that kind of wedding-y vibe to it you know oh, yeah. and springtime weddings are always great so you know you <laughs> never catch know the prize, exactly you know? <laughs> exactly hopefully it reacts with everybody and then bad people I wrote with uh, my friend Jordan Davis and we wrote the song quite a while back and it just had to sit and marinate for a while and I brought it out and uh, kind of reinvented it a little bit and added some stuff to it. So uh, I was just excited about it because it has that kind of swampy feel about it that I kind of grew up playing as a kid so that I wanted to kind of translate that into this song as well. So uh, I think we did a good job. It's a fun one. I think one. so too. I think they were a good combination. You got a yeah. little bit of everything in there. A little yin and yang. Yeah, there. absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that being said, you do have a lot of different influences in your music. Yeah. There are so many different sounds and you can really tell that you have been influenced by a lot of different areas. Yeah. So how would you describe the balance of your sound? Genre is so blurry these days. So just to say country is so, yeah. is so difficult. Oh, you're absolutely. I mean, I grew up with two older sisters and older brothers, so they listened to anything and everything under the sun and it wasn't until my dad started and my mom started introducing me into like the singer songwriter thing so I started out listening to a lot of rock you know and, and metal and stuff like that but I really wasn't gravitating towards it you know until the songwriter stuff started coming out and dad would pitch me well, pitch me I'm not looking at me. my dad used to pitch me music it was great no so uh, <laughs> he used to let me listen to all these songwriters that he loved listen to like Skip Ewing and Paul Overstreet and I didn't know who these guys were but I knew that they could deliver a song and write an amazing song and then when I started figuring out these guys are the ones that are writing all these hits from back when and I was like this is amazing so that really gravitated towards that and I started bringing those elements into my my craft and starting to learn how they crafted a song and I really wanted to put that into what I was doing too so it was kind of a, a mix and a menagerie of all these influences like you said just coming together and just trying to find my own voice so if you were going to describe your sound in three words from all those influences how would you describe your sound what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you don't know what you're talking about, we're not going to know what you're talking about. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know if you've... I, I've, I've never been good at putting, like, a, a, a label on anything like that, because it's just... it's. I mean, I pay homage to a lot of people in my music, and, uh, like, Garth. You know, Garth was a huge influence to me, and, like, the way he could deliver a song and the songs that he could pick just I mean that to me was a huge art in itself being able to pick the right songs because he wasn't a huge writer when he was cutting these songs and um, you know it's just one of those things you kinda evolve with the times and make sure that you're kinda doing what's still true to you but what's 
true to today. As and well. it'll change with you too. You know, music yeah. is still subjective. It'll grow with you. Your songs oh, yeah. will grow with you. So hopefully that ev that involvement has been positive for you. Yeah, I mean, if you listen <laughs> to the very first project I ever did when I first moved to town, I was in I had, had to have something to pay the music habit, right? So I was a contractor. I was building houses, and uh, I would literally change or trade like time and my labor to get for um, studio time. So if like somebody needed, like a producer needed a deck built or a porch built, I'd be like, hey man, I'll build you a porch for a track. And he's like, deal. You know, and that's how I put that's my crazy. first project together. What and was the craziest super, project super you had to do for that? <sighs> I built this glass screened in enclosure for Lonnie Wilson who was the drummer for Diffie at the time. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Not many people can say that you've right? done something like that. <laughs> so something else coming up that people might not know about is you have a little bit of a TV project in the works. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about what this is and how this happened? Absolutely. Well, a lot of people, the fans that, that follow me know that I'm a big outdoorsman. I grew up in the outdoors hunting and fishing and hiking, doing all sorts of stuff like that. And um, I, it just felt natural that I wanted to start a show. So it's called Hogue Wild. It's a lifestyle show. It has a lot to do with my music, but a lot to do with um, conservation in, in the outdoors as well. So we're traveling all over the world, fishing, diving with Navy SEALs, um, hunting, you name it, you know, because we're trying to get the youth back in the outdoors. Absolutely. That is so yeah. exciting. Yeah. So when can people see this? When will, when will this happen? So we're in production right now. It'll be ready first quarter of next year, but um, we're going to start sneaking some stuff online. So All right. So look out for a few sneak some peeks. You guys. You have some, some cool <laughs> All sneak right. Peeks. I love a good sneak peek. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to say to fans and listeners today? Just please go listen to the music, play the music, share it with all your friends, download it, listen to it on the radio and come to my shows wherever I'm at. And where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on lucashogue.com. All of our social media is on there as well. You know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, you name it. We're all, all over the place. All that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all right, everyone. Lucas Hogue, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Absolutely. Check out his two new singles out now and subscribe for more interviews. And we'll see you guys soon. You heard it here. <laughs>